Hey there, Mission Control. Well, we got the uh, reinforcements done. All the brackets are printed and the tower is back together. It's definitely much, much more rigid, but I'm still a little concerned about the flex right here. There's really not much I can do about it because the tank goes right through where it needs to be stabilized. So we're gonna do another water retention and static load test. Fortunately, it's raining, so I've had to move the setup a little bit closer here. Camera inside, I do have electronics on here now. Uh, I've been trying to make as much use of my time as I can, uh, trying to hit some deadlines here. So we are going to uh, give this thing a go with some water and we'll see what happens. I guess I should close the drains. That'd be good. Oops, filling. That drain. So for those just tuning in, for the first time being here at the channel, we're building our indoor grow tower. This is the uh, second version of it. The first version was made of stainless steel. We need to reduce costs, obviously, as we get into it. We proved that the tower works, it can grow things. We learned a lot about how we want to set them up, and we've made all those improvements in this tower, including a massive cost reduction effort by shifting materials from uh, stainless steel structure, stainless steel uh, tanks, to all high-density polyethylene, which is a food-safe plastic and used in the food industry uh, quite extensively. Normally, this base, which is a modular unit, was made of stainless steel bar and we never had any problems as the tank here was also made of stainless steel and as it extended and hit the stainless steel, there was no motion, there was no deflection. The stainless steel can hold the load. But the plastic uh, has minor deflection, about quarter inch on each side is what we had before. We also had deflection down here, which we have uh, dealt with. We've added extra wheel here. So now the load is being distributed upon six touch points to the ground. We've also created new uh, support brackets here, which I did not screw in place. So we'll see how that goes. Did not screw it in place, but it doesn't have to be screwed in place is what I think is gonna be the answer. Whoa! <laughs> and we're getting water on everything. Whoa! Man, we got some water in the pump there, or some air in the pump. That's not good. This is our third uh, test, actually. This is on level ground, mostly level, uh, whereas the test we did before was on a slope. And what, what's happening here and what we're really watching for in this test, water retention, we're good. Uh, I can't wait until we get to thermal molding and we don't have to weld anything anymore. I'm so tired of tank welding. <laughs> That's not my thing. What we're looking for is right here, the tank as it fills is expanding and it's touching uh, the base here and it's pushing it out a little bit and then it's also expanding at the top here on itself as it fills. So uh, when that happens we get deflection and depending on how much deflection there is it can be good or bad. I should say acceptable or not acceptable. The fact that plastic deflects is normal so it's not a bad thing. It's just working with the materials we have to make sure it's an acceptable amount of deflection and not a radical amount of deflection. I can push it in a little bit, so it's starting to get enough pressure to actually push against this structural member here. We've reinforced it here, crossway, as well as down below. Uh, so we're waiting to see how that goes. About four more inches of water to add, and then we'll put the lid on. The real issue here is the lid and how it sits on it. It's not the fact that it's deflecting that's the problem. It's really how the lid sits on it when it's all deflected. See right here, we're getting the oh, there it's not screwed in, so it needs to be screwed in, and that would not have happened. I have moved the electronics out. Unfortunately, it's raining. Really don't like that. I gotta do what I gotta do. Everything's all wired up. There goes the deflection. So now it's it's pretty full. Oh, about another inch to go, and yeah, I can I can probably slide a piece of paper in there when I push it back in. So it is deflection. All right, and by the time I come back, we'll be at fill.
Okay, show you what we got. Let's get the lid on first. The lid's so much easier than the current stainless steel one. All right, so as you can see, we're about four inches from the top, which is the fill line, uh, the plan fill line. And then here, you can kind of see it bowing a little bit there. All right, it bows out and comes back in. It's only minor. We've definitely reduced it. And if we look straight down, it looks like about an eighth of an inch, maybe. So we've definitely reduced it, tremendously so. Same there, about eighth of an inch of a bow. But here's the real kicker. It's right there. See how that white sticks out like that? So the question is, is that gonna be a problem? And that's all just the tank flexing right here. See, I can push it back in and we're back. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so you notice I'm saying about quarter inch, about eighth inch. It doesn't really matter precisely, you know, how much deflection there is. The plastic can handle the deflection, the load. It's the, how does it look? The aesthetics of it. That's the real issue. Uh, this tank doesn't go through cyclical loading. You should really only have to put water in it like once a month, top it off. And by top it off, it's not an empty tank completely filled, meaning it would go through a whole contraction expansion thing. You know, as you fill it, it extends and then it would contract as it uh, empties. So we're not worried about cycling. What we're worried about is how it looks. One way I could solve it is by going back to a metal for that top base. It would have to be welded metal for that very top base of the ring. The, the bottom could still actually be plastic, but that top would have to be metal so that it can't extend out and it keeps that uh, tank in. And then I'd have to do that on the top of the base and I'd also have to do that around the edge of the reservoir. So that is certainly an option. Another option that I have material for is I could put essentially baffles into the tank. So those would be horizontal cross members running sideways on the tank to stop it from extending out. And I just have to make sure I put a good enough size plastic in there uh, and weld it well enough so that as it fills and it puts tension on those, uh, those welded cross members that it doesn't pop, right? Because if it pops, then you're, you're back to deformation. From a con op standpoint, we could also say, don't fill the tank that far. But the problem with that is that tank was set at that certain depth and height so that you can have fish in there and they could be happy. So you don't really want to make a smaller tank for that uh, if you want to be bimodal, meaning hydroponics and aquaponics. So that's kind of the thinking where we're at. It's a challenge. It's not an unsolvable thing, really. As soon as it's done emptying, I could plop it up here. I've got some extra plastic pieces. I could weld them in and do a fork test and see how it looks. And if the welds hold, you know, we could go with that. Uh, Cause fish can still swim around all that. And it might even create some potential habitat hanging type of capability. This is not a game ender. What this is, is God's telling me something right now. He's pointing out to me, hey, you need to uh, look at this thing and, and it's ultimately gonna be better. So we need to get the water out of it, get it out of the rain. I put some plastic coverings over the electronics so it doesn't <laughs> have any problem. Don't have to plug it into power today. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get everything plugged in maybe tomorrow. And we got a lot of work to do still. Uh, we got to get the decks put on, see how they do with the new braces. So we still have more testing to go. Yeah, we'll see how that goes.